happy Monday and welcome back to our little Monday night chat where we um, talk about everything travel related. So um, all of your burning questions about uh, being a travel client, I will answer to the best of my ability. Um, also, um, basically tonight we're going to talk about specifically, hi, Sean, Christina, Hi, Jessica. Um, we're going to talk specifically about monitoring tonight. So monitoring is such an important and critical part of the process. Um, hello from Michigan. Hello. Hi, Alessandra and Ariel. Um, but yeah, tonight we're going to talk about monitoring and kind of what it's, you know, what it entails, what to expect, um, and then some sort of inside information that I think you all will find very helpful. Um, so while people are joining, I'll do a quick um, kind of announcements type of thing. Hi, Elise. Um, so just some updates uh, for everybody. Hi, Brenly. Um, first update is if you are having any procedure here in the office with anesthesia, uh, we do still need a COVID-19 test with negative results dated no more than five days from the date of the retrieval. And so if you're planning an upcoming procedure here in the office, it's going to involve anesthesia. Definitely start thinking about and researching some places in your area um, where you can get COVID testing. Um, rapid testing and PCR testing are both fine. Um, our clients tend to, hi Becca, our clients tend to lean towards the rapid testing only because, like I mentioned, those test results need to be dated no more, Michelle, I'm going to answer that question in one second. Um, no more than five days from the date of the retrieval. And with that, there's a lot of uncertainty because um, I might retrieve two days earlier than you will or something of that nature. So it's a little bit hard to guess when the retrieval date will be. But if you are able to locate an, an, an option in your area that does rapid testing, then that usually alleviates that fear. Um, you can go stim day eight, stim day nine, um, get the test and know that you're going to get the results back in time. Now, Michelle asked a fantastic question, which is what if you've had COVID already? So if you have had COVID in the last 90 days, all you need to do, knowing that per the CDC, you can test positive up to three months after that infection passes. Um, no requirement for a repeat COVID test. We do just need you to upload sort of that proof that you were positive in the last 90 days so that we can kind of cover ourselves on that. Um, and so more information will probably be forthcoming um, regarding those who have been vaccinated versus not. I don't have any more information on that right now. Um, I just know that the requirement still stands to have a COVID test, negative COVID test dated no more than five days from the date of your procedure involving anesthesia, um, and just that you do need those um, results when you arrive for that procedure. Nicole, absolutely. Will your husband be allowed at the appointments? Yes. Um, as long as you both answer no to the screening questions regarding travel outside the country, fever, cough, chills, or known exposure to the virus. As long as you both answer no to those, you are permitted to have him here with you. So absolutely. Um, next sort of update. I, I believe I mentioned this last week, but um, Robin, if your husband uh, is not having any procedure requiring anesthesia, then he does not need a COVID test with you, just the person getting anesthesia. Um, so I did mention this last week and I wanted to bring it up again. Um, you know, we understand that given the nature of what we're doing, that often, not oftentimes, but a fair number of times you might be um, in a position where you need to travel by yourself. Um, and we understand that that comes up. We just wanted to let, I just wanted to remind everybody that if you are needing to travel alone to our office and you need um, any type of anesthesia or a sedative, like maybe a Valium prior to transfer, we are not able to let you drive yourself back to your hotel or to the airport. Um, and we're not allowed to release you to something like an Uber or a Lyft. Okay. So uh, the point in all that is we want to keep you safe. We want to make sure that, you know, anytime you've had anesthesia, we keep you safe. Um, and so um, you will be uh, needing to take a medical transport uh, from our office back to your hotel or wherever you're headed. Um, if you think that that might be uh, the scenario for you, if you're planning on coming alone, send us a message through the patient portal. Let us know, and I'll actually talk to um, our uh, public relations um, a member of that staff. His name is Will. I will check with him to see if we can maybe post the uh, 
options for those medical transport services right on our website. Um, but um, in any case, that medical transportation just um, makes sure that you're in safe hands going to and from any type of procedure where you require anesthesia. Um, and so what I was saying is if you do uh, think that that will be you and you might need that type of uh, transportation, just reach out over the patient portal. Let us know what location you're going to and we can get you the name and number of um, a company that we've worked with in the past. Um, another update or announcement is I uh, just want everybody to be aware if you're doing a, an IVF cycle, um, we do want to make sure everybody has on hand two doses of Lupron and an, a 10,000 unit dose of HCG. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating and uh, more stress inducing than discovering the day you're supposed to trigger when your nurse calls you with trigger instructions. Um, he, he, there's nothing more uh, frustrating and stress inducing than um, not having the trigger that you need. And so if you are doing any type of IVF cycle um, where we're triggering, unless you have discussed specifically your scenario with a doctor um, who says you don't need both, everybody needs both of those medications because what it does is it allows us to uh, provide you the perfect trigger for you on the day of your trigger where we're able to look at your results with how many follicles you have, what your blood levels are, uh, specifically your estrogen level, and then we're able to make sure that we provide you enough of each trigger, or there are some cases where we might not use HCG, but the unfortunate part is we don't know that we're not going to use HCG until that day. And so um, th the trigger meds, again, are two doses of Lupron. Uh, the bottle might say luprolide acetate um, and one 10,000 unit dose of HCG. It is important to note that right now HCG is on a national back order. And so most uh, pharmacies are holding what little doses they have for those of you who need it for trigger. And so if you don't have a dose just yet, definitely follow up with your pharmacy to make sure that, that you get that dose in time. Um, you can also, because of the national back order, you can use two Ovidrel, which is O-V-I-D-R-E-L, Ovidrel. Um, that's a different type of HCG trigger, um, but you can substitute two of those in place of the 10,000 unit dose HCG. So just make sure you've got the Lupron, and then you've also got a 10,000 unit dose of HCG or to Avidrel. And if you have any questions uh, about what you have and whether or not it's enough, let us know. We'll be happy to help. Um, two more updates and then we'll get to the topic. Um, if you're planning on moving embryos, eggs, or sperm in between any of our offices, so let's say you went to um, Let's say you went to Syracuse and had your egg retrieval, but you want to do your transfer in Buffalo. Maybe that's closer for you. You want to make sure that whatever you're moving, uh, eggs, embryos, or sperm, is in its final destination. So if you're, if you're wanting it to be in Buffalo, make sure it's in Buffalo prior to you starting your period when we're ready to get started on that cycle. Because... Um, also very frustrating is um, when you're ready to get started, but that shipment hasn't taken place yet. And so you will, if you're moving um, sperm, eggs, embryos, your first step will be to chat with our financial team, make sure the appropriate fees for said transport are um, in place. And then once those fees are in place, um, then they will, uh, the financial team will notify the lab um, to go ahead with, with moving that specimen to whatever office. So just really helpful to make sure that it's in its desired location prior to you starting meds, just because hiccups happen and we don't want um, your whole cycle to be uh, affected if, if there's a problem with the transportation. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to just kind of tell everybody so everybody's aware um, is that we do start a limited number of people every single day for IVF. And the reason behind that is we wanna make sure um, that we have an adequate staff, an adequate OR, and an adequate physician to do your retrieval or your transfer, or whatever the case may be. In this case, we're talking about retrievals. And so we deliberately start a limited number of people each day to ensure that when your retrieval comes time for your retrieval, we've got a, 
we've got adequate staff uh, to perform that retrieval safely um, and to the utmost um, for your success. Um, and so uh, it's not always the case. If you do have a desired location that's not really negotiable because let's say you are you already have sperm here in one of the offices, or let's say, um, you know, it's it's much closer to drive to one of the offices rather than the other, and you're you're really not negotiable on the location. That's okay, absolutely. Uh, just know that there might be a time where we might need to offer you um, a medication. Um, sometimes it's birth control, sometimes it is estrogen and progesterone, sometimes it's cetratide. It just kind of depends on the number of days we need to delay until we start. Um, and so just know that there will be times, hi, Justine, uh, there will be times that we might offer you um, birth control or estrogen, progesterone, some other uh, medication to just kind of pause you until that next start date is available. Um, and like I said, that's just to make sure that we're able to offer safe, um, high quality care to every single client um, to give them that care that they deserve. Um, I think I saw somewhere rapid testing. Yes, completely fine. Um, okay, so that's all of my announcements. I know it was kind of a lot, like 12 minutes a lot, but let's talk about monitoring. So this is such a huge part of what we do that I wanted to kind of talk about what the different types of monitoring are. Um, and then I wanted to talk about what to expect um, in the different phases of monitoring. Hi, Katie. Um, and so monitoring is going to be one of a couple different types of monitoring. You have your baseline monitoring, which is where you're going to go have a transvaginal ultrasound and lab work. And those don't necessarily need to happen at the same place. And so many of our patients, our clients will upload an order for them. And then they will print two copies, take one to the lab, one to the ultrasound facility, if they're not the same. And that is completely fine. But the baseline monitoring is, is recommended so we can establish your baseline. So we can see what your labs are at baseline. That way, as you go through the cycle, and we continue to draw um, labs to determine kind of how you're doing. We can always base that off of your baseline because not everybody's baseline estrogen is the same. Um, same with all the other hormones. So we're making sure that your body is in fact baseline, that it is safe to start the cycle. Um, and then we're also looking for the information on um, the thickness of the uterus, making sure that it's thin enough to start, um, let's say a transfer cycle, or if you're starting an IVF cycle, we want to look and see how many baseline follicles do you have? So we know that we stimulate, if, you've, if you stimulate too late after you start your period, so anytime after day five, we know that the body has already kind of um, chosen a follicle or two to grow and, and come up and mature and then eventually ovulate. Um, our goal by giving you the stimulation medications is to, to try to get as many of those follicles to join the team as we can. Um, and so if you've already got a bunch of big follicles, we might say, you know what, you've got a lot of big follicles, it might not be the best time to start. And that's one of the discussions that we might have with you after we get your baseline results back is if we, you know, it will always be your choice, um, but we will let you know, hey, look, you've got some big follicles, you know, maybe this isn't the best month and we can, we'll talk through options. So that's your baseline monitoring. Um, the labs that we draw with baseline are going to always be your estrogen, your progesterone, your LH or luteinizing hormone, and then your FSH your TSH and your HCG. So we always want to make sure at the base at the at the start of a cycle that um, that there's no pregnancy. We wouldn't want to involve those medications in that event. Um, we want to make sure that your thyroid's a, a normal, healthy number. So we know that for thyroids that are elevated, that can impact early pregnancy. And so um, if we're able to catch an elevated thyroid at your IVF baseline, then oftentimes we can do we can do things. We can introduce medications to um, make sure that that level is back in a good range before you are to get pregnant. Um, and so um, that would be why we're checking your, your TSH. And then your FSH tells us um, how hard your body is working to, to actually stimulate the ovaries. And that can give us a window into understanding if you might need more stimulation medications than maybe we perhaps thought, or maybe less. Um, and so all of those lab values really give us a, a, an indication, they give us a window into what's going on with you at that, um, at that moment, and then helps us to plan your cycle accordingly. Um, 
So that's your baseline. And then each subsequent monitoring. So you'll do a baseline at the beginning of every cycle, whether it's an IVF cycle, an FET or frozen embryo transfer cycle. Even maybe you're coming to us for a timed intercourse cycle or an IUI cycle. We always like to get that baseline information so that we have a foundation and we know what we're building upon. Um, your monitoring visits are gonna depend, the number of those visits is going to depend on um, what type of cycle, okay? So for an IVF cycle, you will go um, for your baseline somewhere between cycle days two and five, and then we'll send you back again, typically stimulation days seven and nine or six, eight and 10, just kind of depends on how those dates fall on the calendar. Um, and you know whether we think you need much uh, closer monitoring versus, um, you know, we can, you know, stretch you out to stimulation day six versus seven, something like that. So what will happen is when, when we give you a call to go over your baseline instructions, so all of your medication instructions, and we'll get to that in a second, um, but we will tell you when your follow-up monitoring should be scheduled for. Um, and so at that time, we'll also give you an order um, with those subsequent follow-up dates on it. Um, and so every now and then, and I'm going to talk about the process here in just one second. Actually, I'll switch to it now because it's, it's, it's relevant. So the way that it's going to work is you're going to call with cycle day one to notify us that you've started your period. And we count your period as the first day of full flow red, red flow. So anything less than that isn't quite day one yet. That's your body teasing us, but not quite. So first day full flow red is day one. And you're gonna let us know, you can let us know either by, by giving us a call or you can send a message through the patient portal. There's a specific user in the portal that says uh, global travel cycle day one notification. So a while back, we split our web correspondences up into a couple different groups to make it easier for you. Um, and those groups were just your general questions. Um, the, um, the uh, sorry, the general questions was the first inbox, uh, then the cycle day one notifications, and or if you needed a lab rec for something, that's another inbox. And then we have a third inbox that's specifically for results. So if you have results to give us, and we'll talk about that in a second, but if you have results to give us, you wanna, if you're gonna upload them to your chart, that's great. Definitely send us a message to the results uploads group and say, hey, I uploaded my results. So we don't get a notification that you've uploaded your results unless you tell us. Um, and so if you ever upload your results, definitely just follow that upload up with a note to the um, results uploads inbox just to let us know that you've uploaded them and then we'll get those input into your chart and get them reviewed. So you'll call with cycle day one, we will issue you orders for a specific date. So if you call, you know, we'll discuss with you, okay, we'll have you go back for monitor, or we'll have you go for your baseline monitoring on Thursday. If you message, we'll just message you back and let you know, okay, we've uploaded an order for your baseline testing on Thursday, um, and we will give you an order at that time. And then on Thursday, once we get your results, we will discuss when your next monitoring visits will be. So like I said, you're going to be placed on our schedule every single time you have a visit. And this is for uh, the most important reason is because if we don't have you on our schedule, we don't know you're going. And thus, we don't know to look for your results. And we don't know to assign a nurse to care for you and your results on the day that you're going. And so the night before... So for example, before, before I got on here to do this video, I went through tomorrow's schedule and I made sure that um, everybody who's on the monitoring schedule for tomorrow had a nurse assigned to them. And so every day that you go, you'll have a specific nurse assigned to you, not always gonna be the same nurse, um, but you'll have a nurse assigned to you. And then um, that nurse will then um, be responsible for your results. And so, um, this afternoon as I was putting those or this evening as I was, you know, putting those nurse assignments in, we also have somebody from our results team um, that is an amazing group of medical assistants that their sole job um, is working for you to hunt down your results. And so somebody from the results team is on the schedule as well, making sure we know where everybody is going 
what time they're going, if we if we have that information, the phone number of um, the specific facility, that information is all going to be entered in there so that the next day it's all at the ready. And you might even find if you've been with us for a while, you have you may have gotten a, um, a notice through the patient portal, a message the night before that says, hey, we have you on our schedule tomorrow. Let us know where you're going. That's just all of the preparation on our end that goes into making sure that the next day, the day you're going, A, we're all aware you're going. B, we know where you're going and C, we get the results. And so that's kind of the way that process works. And then uh, we assign, so the night before we assign nurses, each individual nurse gets a group of clients that she's going to specifically follow. And then at the start of that day, she's going to go in and she's going to investigate you and your journey and what you've done up to this point. She's going to make sure she understands what medications you've been ordered what the plan is from the provider and what your medications will be based on that plan. Now, those things oftentimes will shift once we do get your results, but oftentimes a preliminary plan is put into your chart in the morning so that as the results begin to come in, that plan is already established and we can make changes if needed. So this is very important is oftentimes our nurses um, are truly and completely the most dedicated group of nurses that I have ever had the pleasure of working uh, with in my entire life. These nurses will oftentimes get on, um, many of them are probably on right now, looking through who their, who their clients are for tomorrow, what their plans are, what they've done up to this point. And they're meticulously researching to make sure that once those results come in, they're able to call you and discuss your, once the re results are reviewed, they're able to discuss your plan with you. And so we do that for each and every single one of our clients to make sure that that plan is in. So what you might find sometimes is either the night before or the morning of the day of, you might be getting antsy. Maybe we don't have your results yet. And you check into your portal and you see, oh my gosh, they just uploaded an order for more monitoring. I don't know what my plan is. I don't know what medications I'm taking. That is just a tentative plan based on that will always be edited based on your results. But that nurse is anticipating that if everything looks good, you'll start meds these, this day, you will uh, return for monitoring day six and eight or whatever the case may be. So if you see orders in your chart that you're not familiar with what those are, chances are you'll be getting a call later in the day to explain them to you. Um, and so there's a lot of those things on the back end that um, that we as nurses do to try to make sure that your cycle um, goes perfectly. Um, and so, or as perfectly as it can. Um, obviously there's many things we can't control, but we like to make sure that we have all of that laid out. And so now that I've explained all of that, I do really hope that um, it becomes evident that if we don't know you're going, we have no idea to look for your results. And so that brings me to a couple kind of helpful hints about the process. Um, the first is let us know right away. If we advise you to go for baseline on Thursday and you called your monitoring facility and they said, I'm sorry, we can't get you until Friday. Well, Take the Friday appointment, check in with us, make sure that that's going to be okay, because there are certain windows in which we want that, that to take place. Um, but always let us know so that we can not only so we can issue you a new order with the correct date, that way you don't have any snags once you arrive uh, at your, your visit, you've got the right order with the right date, but also so that we know that that day before, we know that you're going to be going on Friday instead, and then we can make sure you have a nurse assigned to you on Friday. Um, I'm just going to take a break real quick to answer a question just that's super relevant right now. Um, does this process work for all CMI facilities or just in New York? This is everywhere. So you are a travel client. If you're doing any of your testing, your monitoring, anything that you're doing, if you're doing it in your local area, and then coming to us for retrieval, transfer, IUI, whatever the case may be, you are a travel client. And that doesn't matter whether you're doing your retrieval in Colorado or Albany or wherever you're doing your retrieval, you will be handled and taken care of by um, 
by the travel team until that time in which you are in our office for whatever procedure that you're doing. Um, so very important to let us know right away if you're not able to go the day that we advise you. Something so important, and I this is the if you hear nothing else from what we've talked about tonight, the one of the, if not the most important thing about monitoring is we need your results by 2.30 Eastern time, which we know makes it very tough if you're coming from the West Coast, from Pacific time, from a different time zone, we understand. And we will always do our best to accommodate um, no matter what. But if you can imagine that we handle, let's say, 200 clients a day, that's just a random number. If 75% of those clients don't go for monitoring until late in the day, how will we handle all of you at the very end of the day? And so we want to make sure that we get your results in a timely fashion so that we have the time to adequately make sure that they're reviewed, uh, make sure that a provider takes a look at them, um, just making sure that everything is as it should be. And so um, when Unfortunately, when you go later, then we have even more difficulty getting the results in that timely fashion so that we're able to give you the plan um, and make sure that it is, is perfect or as perfect as it could be. Um, and so um, if, if, if you go late, um, if this makes it hard for you. Um, and it makes it hard for us because ultimately there will be times if you if you're not able to be seen until after about three o'clock, um, we will have to give you your plan the following day. Um, and sometimes that's fine, but other times it's not. So, for example, let's say you're cycle day two today and you called your monitoring facility and they were only able to get you in at four o'clock. If you're cycle day two that's fine. If if we're not planning to start medications till tomorrow, then we can absolutely, if that's a one-off and they can't get you in, that's fine. We can always give you results the next day. But a situation where it would it could be potentially disastrous for you to go late and thus get results late are if you're if you're supposed to trigger. Um, and so I've talked about this in some of my other um, live videos, but I do think it's important to have a backup monitoring facility. And so to have a facility located that you're going to do all your monitoring at, make sure you know where your blood work is going to be. But it's never a bad idea to have a backup facility lined up in the event that your primary facility is unable to get you in until later in the afternoon. Because again, if, if we got all of our results at the very end of the day, we would, we would all be working until about 10 o'clock at night, making sure that you all had your plans. And we want to make sure that we can give you our utmost time and attention. And to do that, that really, really requires that your labs and ultrasound be performed in the morning. Again, we know there's going to be extenuating circumstances here and there. We know that it's it's hard to go through this this process, this journey, um, and keep a job or care for other children that you might have. Um, we understand, um, but we um, we assure you that we ask this for your own benefit because we truly want to give you the best that we can. And when we don't have those results, um, you know, by two thirty, and aren't able to to get it reviewed and make sure that your plan is perfect, um, then your cycle ends up suffering for it. Um, and so I know I spent a long time on that, but it is so important that you complete your labs and ultrasound in the morning, um, so that we can ensure that we have the appropriate time to get those results and to analyze them, review them with the providers, and make sure that your plan is as it should be. Um, one thing that you can do to help us is we, um, and we understand not every facility uh, will do this for you, but where possible, if you can, if you can obtain any type of verbal results from your ultrasound tech or your facility. Um, sometimes um, if you establish at the very beginning with, with wherever you're going, if you let them know, I always say make a friend at your monitoring facility, whether it be the office manager, one of the IVF coordinators, 
have a contact and help explain to them why it's so important that we do receive results though that that same day by 2 30. Um, and oftentimes they'll give you a printout right when you leave either from the ultrasound machine um, or their their charting system they'll give you a report right then and there and so any type of verbal results that you can obtain are is fantastic because that helps us in the event that your results aren't received um, you know, in a good time frame. Sometimes it just helps us to, um, we're always gonna go get that actual report and look for those results, but it helps us in um, developing a plan and making sure that the ball keeps moving forward even if those results fail to come in. Um, it's 2021 and yet we still rely on facts. Um, and unfortunately, facts is uh, notoriously uh, not reliable. Um, and so unfortunately, we do know that some facilities will only fax per their protocol, and that's fine. But the more information you can gather there on the site, uh, on site, the better. And so you might be wondering, well, what information am I asking for? So on the second page of every order that we uh, push out to your patient portal, we upload to your patient portal, is a little worksheet. And we developed this worksheet um, in with this in mind, with this idea of getting verbal results. And so you'll see on that monitoring worksheet on the second page of your orders, you'll see it's asking for the number and size of the follicles on your left ovary. So ideally we wanna know how many are there? There are 10 and what are their sizes? They are six, eight, 10, whatever. Um, so we wanna know how many follicles are on each ovary and then what their sizes are. And that's most important for an IVF cycle or an IUI cycle where we're wanting, even an intercourse cycle, we wanna, we wanna make sure that there's the right amount of follicles and that they're growing, et cetera. If it's for a transfer, we don't necessarily need to know the number and size of all of the follicles. It can be helpful to have just the largest follicle on each side. That way we can kind of assess for whether or not your, um, you're due to ovulate. Um, so that helps us assess that. But for a transfer cycle, you definitely want to find out how thick is the endometrial lining. And they're going to give you a number um, that's uh, usually in millimeters. Um, and then um, what is the pattern of that, that lining? So there's two primary patterns that we see inside the uterus. One is called homogenous, and it just means that the texture inside the uterus is all kind of the same. Um, and then there's the the word that you may have seen before. It's on that monitoring sheet. It says trilaminar. That is a specific pattern. It's a specific way that your lining will look on ultrasound. You'll essentially see sort of three stripes, which is where we get trilaminar. Um, and that's an important indication of whether or not your body is ready for if, if it's transfers your next step. Um, it's very important for transfer. And so if you're doing IVF monitoring and you're, you wanna get a verbal, we just wanna know the number and size of all the follicles on each ovary and your lining thickness is kind of a bonus on that one. If you're doing a transfer, we want to know <clears throat> we want to know the thickness of your lining and then we want to know its pattern is it trilaminar or is it homogenous and we can do a lot with just that verbal information and so if you're able to get a verbal and you're able to jot it down on that monitoring worksheet that is great you can email that to us there is an email address right on the order you can fax that to us if you'd like or you can upload it to your chart if you're just now joining us and you may not have heard earlier, if you upload it to your chart, just please make us aware by sending a message through the patient portal to travel results uploads. And that will give us a notification that, oh, she uploaded them. And then we can make sure that those results get put into your chart and that your nurse is notified so that she can give you your plan. If you are able, some places, some outside monitoring facilities uh, have a portal for, for that office. So they, just like you have your CNY patient portal, they would have their own patient portal. And sometimes your results might be uploaded to that patient portal. Um, a popular one is called MyChart um, that a number of facilities use. Um, but there's, there's multiple different ways that you might be able to get your own results through uh, a patient portal linked to your facility. 
I would ask them right when you establish monitoring if that's something that they offer. Most likely your smaller um, OBGYN offices and places like that may or may not offer a portal. But if you're going and you're doing labs and ultrasound at a hospital, on the other hand, they're very likely going to have a patient portal um, that you might be able to glean your results um, directly from. And so um, if you do uh, see your results on a portal and you screenshot them and you either upload them or email them or fax them, please make sure that we have your name and date of birth on there. So every now and well, not every now and then, a fair number of times we get these uh, my charts uh, or different patient portal screenshots um, and they're, they come to us from, you know, um, Twinkle Fairy 123, and we have no idea who's, who those came from. And so just always let us know. Um, you can either jot it down on, on your um, report or just put it in the email, but just let us know name and date of birth. That way we're, um, we can make sure that, the, that we've um, attached those results to the correct client. Um, and so um, that was kind of about the verbal information. And then we talked about um, if you upload your results, just making sure that you send us that message. Um, yes, 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 a stat ultrasound is required. And so it's very, again, I really cannot say enough about make, sort of making a friend at your monitoring facility. And whether that's the check-in person at the hospital um, that you know checks you in for radiology, or like I said, an office manager, a nurse coordinator, um, anyone like that, um, it can, it, you can, Get, make a relationship with them to where you can say, and I just want to remind you, this is stat, M you know, making sure that they're entering your orders as stat because a fair number of times, um, and it does say stat on the order, but a fair number of times um, you'll go to a lab and they will key in your tests from our order, but they won't mark it as stat. And so just kind of over communicating to your monitoring facility. Okay, these will be done stat, right? These will be faxed to my doctor, right? Um, you are aware they need the results by 2.30. Just kind of over communicating with your facility to make sure that we get all of the information we needed and that we get it in a time frame that allows us to um, evaluate everything and make sure that you have a plan. So that is kind of all of the notes I had um, I, I see um, one of our nurses is helping to answer questions, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, but now I can open it up to questions for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, this is a good one. Um, I don't know if it's going to show on the whole screen, but Anna says, I'm in Pacific time, five to six hours behind you in New York. I'm doing an FET. I don't mind results or calls the next day. However, if I know my lighting is good to go, can I agree with the nurse beforehand to start? given the levels are agreeable, yes, absolutely. So um, we will always, Anna, we'll always discuss those options with you. So if you know we're not gonna get those results same day, sometimes what we can do is have you go, um, like maybe the day, the afternoon prior to when we would normally plan for you to go, but then we know you'll have, we'll have those results by the next day. And so if you're in a unique situation like that, where you're um, way behind, you must be in Hawaii or Alaska, but um, we can always work something out, but, um, and we'll always let you know what your options are. And so um, we will talk through with you. Yes, if lining is such and such, you can start meds versus, you know, an alternative. And so that's a, such a great question. And there are some clients that know in advance that that might be the situation, either a time zone issue, or they just, they live in a, a very remote part of their state and there, there are no other options. So we will always do our best to work with you no matter this, the scenario. Um, and we will give you those options of, um, you know, what, what we could do in the absence of results. So uh, next question um, is from Angie. She said, how soon will you know when to book flights and hotels? So this is a hard, um, this is a little bit of a hard part of the process because we don't really know until A, your transfer is scheduled. Well, I guess I should say retrieval first, but until you're triggered and we've scheduled your retrieval or when we know your transfer is gonna be. And so it definitely makes that part of the process really tough. Um, in that we know you have flights to book, travel to schedule, hotels, et cetera. And so what we will do is at your baseline, we will try to go through with you a scenario of um, when we think your procedure might be. And it will always be a might. We will never tell you, almost never are we going to tell you your retrieval will be on this date. 
because unfortunately we don't know until um, until the time comes when those procedures will be. And so what I think is really helpful is to kind of get your ducks in a row ahead of time. So when you have that baseline call and your nurse gives you those estimated dates within which your transfer or your retrieval will fall, you can always give the hotel a call and sort of understand what their process is in terms of, you know, can you, how late can, until you can cancel and things like that. With flights, um, it can be a bit tougher. And so there, there's kind of two options. One is, um, is to schedule around the dates we think it will be with the understanding that that ticket, if, if, if it's a plane ticket, is refundable or changeable. Because we know not every airline is going to let you change your dates without a fee. Um, and so sometimes it can be helpful to call the airline in advance. So if you know that the primary, you know, airline that flies from your your location to us is is you know American Airlines. You can call them in advance and ask them what their policies are. Many airlines offer a what's called a medical fare, and so it's essentially you know many people travel for medical care, and if you if they do offer a medical fare, you can schedule that or you know book the ticket, and then you're allowed to make changes within a certain time frame. Um, before, uh, you know, there would be a fee. And so we always, where possible, recommend waiting until we know for sure. Um, but in the event that you can't, um, or flights are just getting too expensive, there's always the option to book a kind of a tentative itinerary with the, with the understanding that that is changeable if needed. And so again, we will always do our best to sort of estimate when things will, will happen. Um, but we, we really do, um, tailor each person's trigger to exactly when it's right um, and the transfer to exactly when it's right. Um, and so off with that comes the, the unfortunate uh, problem of not knowing too far in advance. So I know that was no magical answer, but I think the more research you can do in advance of um, your travel and more understanding what policies are at, on the airline that you're going to, to travel, um, that, can, that can be really helpful. Okay, so other questions. Let's see here. A couple of my nurses have jumped in and <laughs> are helping me with questions. So this is amazing. Um, let's see here. Michelle says, I'm supposed to start IVF next month, but haven't really heard from anybody as the steps I'm supposed to take from now until then. So Michelle, I would tell you that if your consultation was more than 14 days ago, please send us a message through the patient portal or give us a call tomorrow morning and we will be happy to help. If your consultation was 14 days or less in the past, um, we ask you to, um, to be patient. We will reach out to you. So our travel team, um, all of our nurses, in addition to all of the monitoring that we do um, and all of the, the different results that we're getting, we also are reaching out to new, our new patients who've had a consultation with the provider and are now ready for the next step. And so Again, with that, we really like to be able to reach out and um, personally speak to you, go over everything with you, order your medications. Um, and so if it's been more than 14 days, please accept my apologies. Um, and if it has been less than that, um, just hang tight a little bit longer with us. Um, and we can, you can even um, send us a message and we can kind of let you know when we think we might be reaching out based on where we are kind of with the new patient consultations. So um Amy is asking, is there a way to find out suggested or recommended monitoring facilities if we aren't familiar with any? I want to say a couple people have maybe chimed in, um, but the way that I kind of recommend that that you do this, and this is kind of what I say to all of those new, new patient consultations that I reach out to, is just um, first check with your OBGYN. Really, everybody who's going to embark upon a treatment cycle has the same goal, and that goal is to get pregnant. And when you get pregnant, you will need an OB. And so I highly, highly recommend if you do not have an established OB to establish one as soon as possible so that we can make sure that you, if you, in, in the event at any time during your treatment cycle, you need somebody to lay eyes on you right now, you have a local OB available to do that. So if you reach out to local OBs and your OB is not or your OBGYN is not able or not willing to do your monitoring, 
I would always recommend ask him or her if they know somebody who will. So explain to them what you're doing, the type of monitoring ultrasounds and labs that we're looking for. And oftentimes they're able to point you in the right direction. However, if that comes to a complete dead end, the next place um, we will we would ask you to look would be local um, diagnostic imaging facilities or radiology clinics or local hospitals. So oftentimes um, a local hospital is a good choice if you live in a pretty rural area. Um, usually if, if you are going to a local hospital, they would be able to do your ultrasounds and your labs for you. Um, but we recommend reaching out to those types of facilities. There is also a map on our website of different monitoring facilities that our clients have used in the past. Unfortunately, just because we have so many clients and that use so many different facilities, um, we're not always able to keep up with, um, like maybe an office closes or an office no longer wants to do remote monitoring for a client. So there might be times where you might run into, run, run into a dead end in that regard, uh, but it's an option for where to start. Um, and then you can always reach out to us. I mean, we will try, it's 100% um, kind of on you to figure out where you're gonna do your monitoring. Again, we monitor clients from all all 50 states, multiple countries. Um, and so I wish we could keep a list of all of those monitoring facilities, but since we can't, um, those are kind of my best recommendations are to start with your local OBGYN. And then if he or she is not able or not willing to do um, your monitoring for you, then um, checking with um, a local diagnostic imaging facility um, and seeing if they're able to help you. Um, okay, um, let's see here. Claudia, this is a great question. Doing IVF this month, I went for a baseline on day two, started medications on day three, and I'm going for an ultrasound day seven and nine. Will I need another ultrasound? Very hard to know. Usually when we're able to monitor you cycle day nine or stimulation day nine rather, usually that is enough information to determine when you should trigger. Um, in the event that it's not, or if you're not, um, you're not ready to trigger on day nine, then yes, we would give you a new order and a new date to go back for monitoring. So in the event that you're not ready, um, we would let you know that you needed to go back. Um, Marie is asking, um, are we doing egg retrievals in Buffalo yet? Um, not just yet. Um, we are um, hope, hoping to be up and running um, very shortly. Um, but unfortunately, um, we had some some uh, staff members that had some unfortunate medical concerns with their own family um, that kind of made us decide that we wanted to just uh, pause on that for just a minute, make sure that our staff is up and running at full speed um, so that we can offer you the same service that you're used to receiving in our other offices. And so we are hoping that that will be as soon as possible. Um, and you're welcome to, you know, check into the patient portal um, every now and then to see if, if that's something that we're doing. Um, it most likely will be um, put on Facebook um, on the announcements, but you're always welcome to ask. Um, Diana is asking, do you need to have baseline labs before priming with Omnitrope or can you just start with your next cycle? Um, so we do ask that you just per perform and confirm a negative home pregnancy test. Um, but with that, yes, Omnitrope priming um, can be started um, beforehand. Just reach out to us through the patient portal and we can give you instructions on how much and where to inject it and things like that. So, um, but yes, we, we can absolutely do without a baseline um, if, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, Robin, yes, the Maplewood. Oh, that's not Robin. Uh, there we go. That's Robin. The Maplewood Suites. Yes, that is typically the hotel that we recommend for our um, Syracuse location. On the website, there are um, there are other um, options or recommendations for hotels if you'd like to look there. And then uh, for each of our other offices, we will um, we will note some options for you there as well. Um, somebody's asking when. Uh, Memo, Ma Memo Masters, uh, when will the Atlanta location start IVF? Um, that is an excellent question. Um, I do know that we would love to do that at some point in the future, um, but our, our next, um, you know, big opening will be Buffalo. And then from there, um, we will keep you apprised. Um, but I, I don't know any specific dates or um, even targets for when we are going to open a full service IVF lab in Atlanta, if, if that's even on the table. So, um, but stay tuned to Facebook. Um, you know, things change often and quickly. And so uh, that could change very, uh, very soon. Um, 
Uh, Devin is asking if I haven't started my period yet and I'm on cycle 40, can I jump right into stims after my consult? So Devin, you may, may or may not have heard me mention earlier, but we're about 10 to 14 days out from your consultation is when we're going to reach out and kind of bring you into the fold, order meds, next steps, etc. And so if, um, if you have your consult and you still haven't started your period, um, you know, I don't know if it's a situation where you need your period to be induced with a medication or not. Um, we could certainly wait to induce that period until you're ready to get started. But um, whether or not you would be able to start right away, um, there is that, like I said, that 10 to 14 day um, window between your new patient consult and then when we will reach out and get the ball rolling. And so oftentimes that will mean um, that you're not able to necessarily stem that very next cycle. Um, but just um, stay in touch. I don't know when your consult is, but hopefully um, hopefully we would be able to. And like I said, if you if you don't get a period between your consult and that new and that call from from our team, then absolutely we could, in, you know, send you in for an ultrasound and discuss inducing a period. Um, so um, this is a great question. And I will, I think I will end with this one. Um, but what do we need to expect for our consultation for IVF? Mimi, that's a great question. I definitely recommend going back um, and watching, I think, um, the second video that I did in December, I talked all about what to expect after your consultation. But essentially, um, your consultation will be with a provider, either a nurse practitioner, um, a PA, or a doctor, and we will the, the provider will go over everything. Um, pretty much, you're 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 the boss. You're going to lead the discussion, but we want to talk about the provider is going to talk with you about your journey up to this point. So, what treatment maybe you have tried, or what testing you have tried, um, your pregnancy history, if any, um, and then just kind of understanding what your goals are. If you're maybe you have a few children and you want to have, you know, you want to have another child, that would be a different type of consultation than I've never been pregnant or I've been pregnant many times, but I keep miscarrying. And so um, your consultation will be um, will be uh, geared towards exactly what you need and developing a treatment plan that will help you achieve what it is that you want, whether that be, you know, a final kid to cap off your family or you, you know, you're looking for a whole football team. Um, it's you're the boss, you're going to drive the conversation. Um, no, you do not necessarily need to know dosages of previous meds. If you if you do know, and you can get that information, that is excellent, because then that helps the provider to determine, okay, you know, this was the dose we tried before, perhaps we need to increase that or decrease that or whatever the case may be. And so the more information you can get to us ahead of time, the better. Um, but no, um, our providers are all extremely skilled and have been doing this a very long time um, with collective hundreds of years of experience, I'm, I'm guessing. And so they're, they understand um, very often that maybe you don't have access to that information. So um, any information that you can provide, whether that is number of eggs retrieved, number of fertilized, any information you can provide is always better. Um, but you don't necessarily need to know um, what those dosages are. So all right. Well, with that, I will wrap it up. Um, as always, um, if you have suggestions for topics that you'd like to discuss in the future, please drop them in the comments. I would love to um, you know, talk about the things that you want to hear about. Um, I know answering questions is a big part of this. And, and so I try to do what I can. I'm so sorry if I overlooked your question. Um, it's, it's a, it's a bit trying to keep up with all the questions. And, um, but if, if you have any burning questions that, that you need to know, um, you know, you can always message us through the patient portal. We'd be more than happy to answer your answer that question um, for you. But definitely let me know um, moving forward if there's any topics. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Amy, a video on the financial aspects uh, would be great. That's a fantastic idea that I will um, definitely discuss um, with the team and see if that's something we could offer. Because I know, um, you know, monitoring is a huge part of the stress as is meds, but also... Um, the financial piece um, is such a huge, if not the biggest um, piece of the puzzle. And so that's a great idea. Thank you so much for the suggestion. And I will definitely see if um, we can bring that to you. So once again, please leave your comments um, 
for any any topics you'd like to see in the future. Um, if you need anything specifically uh, about your case, reach out to us through the patient portal. I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful week. Um, let us know what we can do for you. Um, and we're, I'm just really grateful that you all um, choose to spend your Monday nights with me. So take care, have a great week, and we will see you next week.